Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 14614 Electro from Illinois. They recently competed at their league championship where they took home the winning alliance title with a high score of 247 points, and they're currently ranked in the top 20 on FTC stats by OPR. They have a fantastic robot and some really, really great intake and slide strategy, so we're going to jump into all that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Let's jump into your intake. You guys have a very unique intake. I see those rubber bands on the front. And from what I've heard, it has a ton of different capabilities. So walk us through it. Let's talk about the hardware and then also the software. So coming into the season, uh, there are really two main designs that we were thinking of. A claw, which we've seen a lot of teams use successfully, but also in Vex, there was a game a few years ago which used a rubber band style intake. And we looked at both of those and we found that if we could get the rubber band intake to work well, we could intake cones directly and just immediately gain control of them when touching them. Mm -hmm. And it gives us amazing control of the cone. Um, additionally, what this allows, we found the correct height, so where we can really easily just immediately pick up falling cones and directly intake them, which gives us a lot of flexibility during matches, and that's what I really think differentiates our intake. Yeah, no, really that's fantastic. And so, how is it powered? Uh, so we have two servos, one each controlling the front and back, uh, one. In the yeah. So one's controlled by this servo, and the other, uh, we kind of have a dead axle mm -hmm. on here just to power the front. So each of them are controlled separately, which allows us to have each of those different functions. Yeah, no, that that's really cool. And so, how has your intake like changed throughout the season? Was there any like significant upgrades you guys made? Um, and is there anything you're looking to do in the future? So our first intake was a lot wider, um, and a bit more difficult to maneuver. So we just compacted everything down um, and just made it more efficient. Yeah, yeah. And so let's jump into the next part uh, of your robot. I would say that's like your turret arm. And so walk us through that, how it's built. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the software behind it a little bit. So when we were designing the turret, uh, this kind of goes into our mentality of really wanting to be a really versatile bot, one that could do both circuits and cycle on the high. So what this allows us to do is just go straight back and forth on the high junction with really low cycle times. But also when going around the field, our narrow drivetrain and fast slides combined with the turret really give us the ability to create circuits. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so what are you using like for your turret components? Like how are you powering it? What's your arm made of? Walk us through all of that. So we use two servos to guide to you um to control the turret and we gear them together on um, one to one gear ratio. That way um we have the speed and the power to control the turret. We wanted the turret to be really snappy so our drivers would have no issue integrating that into the routine. Yeah, and so talking about the programming behind it a little bit, uh, are there any sensors you guys are using for your turret, or was it just like the set to position for the servo uh, was good enough? And then like what automations do you guys have in Teleop that are really useful? Yeah, so part of running the um, turret is that we're able to motion profile our servos, and that runs independently on top of our normal Teleop software. And then in Teleop itself, we have a couple set positions for our drivers, which makes cycling back and forth between the um, high junction and then the um, substation much faster. And it really allows us to reduce our cycle times and make sure that we go as fast as possible. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked about the turret. Let's jump right into the lift. Walk us through, like, what slides you're using, how are you powering it, um, and then we'll talk about, like, what, what you've done to make sure it's really fast and consistent. 
So we use we utilize Masumi slides. In previous years, we used Rev slides, but this year we um, switched Masumi's because um, they're fast and they're more efficient than Rev. And we use the three printed inserts, and we um, have all we utilize like all three inserts to make sure that we have the stability and the speed to lift it up all the way. Yeah, and so how are you powering your lift? So we have a gearbox at the bottom here, which combines two 13.7 GoBuilder motors into one output shaft. So in previous years, when we've used two slides, um, if we've had two separate motors, we've noticed that the slides tend to get um, go different heights, and that becomes really difficult for software to handle. So this year, we combine everything into one spool, so everything goes up homogeneously, um, all the same height, and it's really been effective. No, that makes complete sense. And so, yeah, from a programming standpoint, I know you mentioned that you had difficulty like with two slides and or with two independent motors on each slide. So now with this combined gearbox, are you using encoders on both of the motors or just one or like what's what's the, what's that looking like? Yeah, so for this gearbox, we're actually using both of the encoders on each on the motors because we've seen uh, issues with the encoder skipping counts. And so with both of them, we have a little bit more reliability and we're able to um, keep it accurate and consistent through the entire match. Sure. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And so one question I have for you guys is like, as a team having currently, it's the 16th highest OPR in the world. And, you know, looking as you're going to compete next week, I'm sure it'll go up even more. It You guys have to be super, super consistent, not only in your autonomous, but also your driving. So are there any like game strategy or driving tips that you want to share with teams that just really helps you elevate your consistency to the next level? So part of our um, autonomous strategy, I guess, is really having as reliable of a robot as you possibly can. So a lot of our robot is built for redundancy, the multiple lifts for stability, um, the motors geared together for more redundancy, and even our software is um, has built-in redundancy to make sure that we always either park or if we're running out of time, um, or just make sure that we get as many cones as possible while maintaining as many points as possible. Sure, um, and so currently how many cones does your autonomous score? Currently, our autonomous is able to score uh, the preload plus five cones from the cone stack. And that's onto the high junction or medium junction? That's on. Level? So we have options for both the high and the medium junction. Okay. Depending on defense. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And as far as like driver strategy goes, how often do you guys practice? Do you like track your practice or anything like that? Or like what would you tell like a beginning team or a team that's really looking to elevate themselves to the level you're at of like how to do driver practice? So when we first built this drivetrain, we spent um, two three days um, building the drivetrain, wiring it, and then we spent um, we spent some time coding it. And then right after that, um, we just started working on driver practice while Prav worked on the auto. And then even after after every practice, we made sure to get at least like thirty minutes of driver practice. Got it. One yeah. thing that I'd like to add for drivers is that. I feel like consistency needs to be stressed the most mm -hmm. because while you may be getting high scores, um, getting a consistent score will allow you to get the high seating to actually advance, mm -hmm. um, which helps a lot. Yeah. So that's one thing that we like to focus a lot on during teleop, not going for the circuits too much, but to really go for just the consistent point scoring and winning matches. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. So, Electro, thank you very much. I know you guys have your Illinois State Champs coming up very, very soon. So, I'm sure everyone's very excited to see how you do there. But thank you so much for this interview. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Funds YouTube including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.